What's your reaction? I mean, do you, first and foremost, as we get the announcement in the coming days about the new prime minister, has anything been... Have you received any indication that housing is going to be an issue that they're going to take seriously and really deal with? I know some of the... Um, candidates have said that they treat housing as a priority, but as far as I can tell, I can't see any reason that the new Prime Minister is going to be free of any of the same political constraints that has meant that housing and house cost, housing costs haven't been solved for the past few decades. So, no, I have no reason to be particularly optimistic. And why do you think that there has been a lack of dealing with this issue? Because, I mean, everyone in principle, you know, says that they want the next generation to be able to get on the housing ladder, you know, under the Thatcher years, she talked about a property-owning democracy. It was very much part and parcel of that kind of Anglo-American identity, the home-owning within the country. But that does not seem to have really budged when it comes to doing something about it in recent decades. I think this is actually a really common political problem. I think housing is one of those issues where the benefits are diffuse. So we all benefit from the idea that we're building more houses and the next generation are having places to live but the people who suffer are quite localised. Nobody likes new building on their street. I think there's a mostly true assumption that new housing is going to be loud during the construction costs. It'll probably be uglier than whatever it was replacing, be that a field or an older home. Um, and so people like really strongly feel like they do not want new housing in their, in their local area, and they especially don't like the kind of proposals that are put to them. Mm. Housing gets more popular the prettier a development is, but even then, people still are aware of the fact that it's going to be like messy and noisy on their street for a year or so as the building takes place. It's kind of nimby, not in my backyard. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think it's quite like it's a big problem to solve the fact that like everyone benefits from new building, but only a small set of people suffer, and these small sets of people end up with like way more say over what gets built. And then you replicate this throughout the whole country, and it becomes very difficult to build homes. Yeah, and I think the Tories at some point did try and do something on housing, and then. Uh, you know, they, they lost one of their seats to the Liberal Democrats because of the NIMBYs, apparently, and, and, and one of the seats, I think it was Chesham uh, and, and, and Amersham. There was a whole host of reasons for that, but that was one of the issues that people highlighted. But on, on that point about the fact that, you know, you, a lot of the time people associate it with being loud and ugly, I mean, maybe do we need to rethink how, housing, maybe make it more architecturally beautiful, something that actually fits into the uniqueness and, and distinctive features of a particular community? So it seems like it's actually adding something... To, to development rather than actually just building a massive, huge tower block and, and making it a bit ugly. Yeah, so this is something I'm a massive advocate of. There's a policy called street votes, which is one of the few things that is causing me some optimism mm. um, because I think it is likely that either possible future prime minister might adopt it. Um, and it's the idea that people on a local street can decide what gets built on their street. They get to set their own design code. Um, and a couple of trial pilots have been run, and people do end up building like beautiful things that the community are actually very happy to endorse. Mm. So I think there are ways of using community-based planning to make building more popular. Mm. And so on that point, on the particular policy that you're a big advocate of, what would you like to see? I mean, yeah, what, what would you like to see going forward that would actually make a realistic, tangible and meaningful difference? Um, I would, like... Very simply, I would be happy to see anything that involves more private housing being built in the most expensive parts of the country. Mm. I think a lot of our economic problems are caused by the fact that it is very difficult for people to move to jobs in London and Bristol and Cambridge and Oxford and Edinburgh and Cardiff and all like the most like vibrant parts of our economy. So anything that results in more building, I think I'm like very happy with. So street votes is one of these ideas. I'm also like very happy with um, plans to deregulate building around already existing stations. So um, apparently we could build about two million um, new homes in London if you made it legal to build in the green belt um, for just one kilometre around already existing stations. So there are all kinds of ideas of this nature. Um, yeah, I mean, what about... Uh, I guess that's a lot of the supply-side reforms. I mean, I think Rishi Sunak talked about more 95% mortgages. Perhaps do we need to bring back, you know, 100% mortgages? I would not be happy with that. I think the reason... Um, the reason to restrict mortgages is actually quite a sensible one. We are worried about financial crises mm. um, and people going into negative equity um, where their houses end up decreasing in value and they still have to pay back their mortgage. Um, also, as far as I can tell, there is no clever economic solution to the fact that um, there are more people than there are houses. Um, so all you do by increase, giving those measures is you mean people are paying mortgages for longer, you'll probably see an increase in house prices um, and you'll just slightly rearrange who gets to have a house. Mm. There's nothing that can be done about the fact that there are more people than there are homes. 